and welcome back to the channel guys gl rustic design here uh, today we're going to be working on a 10 foot wide by eight eight and a half foot tall bookshelf this thing is a monster if you didn't catch my previous video of how i designed most of this on my cnc machine make sure you go back and check that out and while you're at it make sure that you go hit the subscribe button like my channel share my videos drop a comment below if you need any help or if you have any questions but so here I use pocket holes a lot for just about everything. Uh, pocket holes and glue is hard to it's hard to beat. Um, so pocket holes everywhere. Uh, you know, th so th this is this is end up being the back, and they, those are the sides. Um, so the so you're gonna have the outside and the sides. I'll, I'll link all the all the um, measurements below so that you can hopefully get close i always recommend don't go exactly by my measurements um you need to you, you always need to make your own measurements because if i'm off by a quarter of an inch or you know whatever eighth of an inch that's gonna make you off so make sure that you make your own measurements but here so you, i had the back piece um pocket hold it in to the uh this is what will be the side i make sure that you put the pocket holes on the outside so that you can later attach the face this piece is the inside of the uh of where the drawers are going to be so you'll need this times two um and later down the video uh the pocket holes that i put on the very back um is what i i don't know what i was thinking but so you don't actually need these ones that were pointed up on the back um but yeah so this is just the middle piece that was the middle divider that, that held those two together and then from here on uh i start working on the face so once again, face clamp, pocket holes. Uh, I just use regular pine for the face. And then I use um, birch, cabinet grade birch, uh, so that I can run it across my machine for the whole um, base and shelving of this whole thing. So, um, but once you get all those, you know, there's, there's a lot of mark and there's a lot of individual little things you got to do. But um, so you, you can kind of put the drawers wherever you want. I chose to put six. You know, you can make multiple drawers here. You can make it eight, nine, ten, or whatever, however many drawers you want. Um, I kind of just divided it by six and went from there, made them all even. And then, so once you get done with this step, um, the next step is to use those pocket holes I told you. Make sure you put on. Um, attach this to the, the the face so this holes so you're gonna have this times four pieces you're gonna have these pocket holes the middle two as I show you here and then you're also gonna have the one on the outside okay and then so from there um, this is me doing the trim on the very outside of the bookshelf um, it's just I just one by you know I took I, I usually you see that pine in the back. I usually use two by or one by ten pines, and I'll strip them into one by threes. Um, you know that I, I've kind of realized that comes out to be about the best looking, you know, trim that I can get out of it. So, uh, but just more pocket holes, more clamps. Um, uh, you know, sometimes on the base I'll use a little bit of glue. Uh, so here I just use a um, a T25. Um, Torx head bit uh, and screw. So there's two on the top, two on the bottom. Make sure that that holds the trim on. Actually, there's six. So there's going to be two on the bottom, two in the middle, two on the top. Um, and then, so just a quick overview of kind of where we're at to this point. Uh, you see the two sides, how the face is held together, um, how the back's held together, the middle. And this pretty much completes your base, um, and then you can start working on the inside. Like these holes, you really don't you don't need those. Come to find out later. Um, but so here again, I use the same birch on my CNC machine and design the shelves. You don't need a CNC machine to do this. Uh, it's just a lot of hand cutting uh, if you don't have one. So uh, pocket holes everywhere. So I use birch for the bottom two, and then uh, pine for the middle two shelves. Um, and then from there, um, I just use pocket holes, and then I use, um, I actually I actually cut myself a little scrap block to um, to make sure all the shelves are, I think they're like 11 inches apart. Um, 
and just so you don't have to really do any kind of measurements uh, and make sure you and don't don't forget that pocket hole um, that you put uh, dead center to hold it on um, like I said this little scrap block just really helps get everything aligned And once again, so once you get done with that step, same step, same process, uh, the two middle boards, uh, you know, you could you could make these, you know, however many shows you wanted, one, two, or three. Um, I'll try to, like I said, all the measurements that I have below, I'll link, um, you know, or top out and see if I can get them right. So here, I made this bookshelf so that it could be separated into two, really just for transportation purposes. Um, so once you get those two pocket holes, those three pocket holes in, then you can start putting the back on. Um, I actually cut these into four pieces. I tried to originally try to align the where the the middle of these two boards meet to be dead center so that I could hide the seam. Um, and I actually I think I, I missed I missed the bottom two up by like half an inch or so. So, uh, but the top two I got right um, after later after I cut it after I had to remeasure. So. Um, but I think my mistake was I uh, initially made the bottom um, about an inch or half an inch shorter than I had originally planned on it to be. So, or, you know, not as wide, but so, yeah. So here, once you get all four of those pieces seamed together, you can glue those together. Just make sure you don't glue the top down to the base so that, um, you know, you can later move it because this thing is heavy once you get done. Um, but once you get the spine down the middle, um, this was, I actually think, my opinion, this was the hardest part of the whole build um, because I had to reach around to grab the spine, hold it in. Um, but, you know, I got, once you get one of them, you kind of get the rest of them. So, and then from there, you, I'm doing the face of the upper portion. So the shelves and, you know, the top and whatnot. So here, this is just inch and a half strips of pine. Um, you know, I kind of, I've done, I done this first so that it'd be easier to do the shelf. Um, so um you know more pocket holes line these all up i don't i don't remember what the measurement was but um so once you get that once you get all those even you can kind of set it up there i would also grabbed another small piece of pine and set it up underneath this to really help it get it level um but and then so i just use pocket holes uh you know to attach the face of this and then i'll later come back with some trim to trim to hide all those holes um, like I said, my, my goal of most projects is to hide any holes I can, um, you know, to just, just get, you know, it gives everything a cleaner look in the end. So, but yeah, so why, if I have another second, please, if you have any comments, drop below, make sure you subscribe to the channel. I'm trying to, trying to get to my goal, trying to get this thing more out there, trying to make more videos. Um, hopefully you enjoy this and hopefully you enjoy all the videos that are to come. If you ever want to see videos about my shop, about more of the CNC machine, about more of just more of things in general, um, please drop a comment below. I would love to know any kind of content that, that, that you want to see, maybe how I got started, you know, etc. So uh, but here, so I would put a little bit of glue to hold the spine in um, and then I just use some trim nails because I really didn't want the pocket holes to be seen in the middle. So I just use some, some very small brad nails. Um, got those in and then so each shelf each one of these shelves is going to be the same so um i just used you know went around all the corners i think i put like three or four pocket holes on the front three or four on the back one on each side um got you know started from the face got it about even um you know got those pocket holes in and then came back with a square and then just kind of made sure everything was level make sure everything was the same height um you know, and then just wrench and repeat all the way down. Um, you know, start like I said, start at the very top because I thought it was going to be the hardest. Started from the very top, went down, and then back up the other side. And also, if you speak and going back to the content, you know, later, later down the road, if you want to know maybe how I got started of doing this, you know, kind of, you know, even profit I make a year, um, you know, any, anything that if you're, if you're just generally curious about how everything's done, just please let me know. So moving into, this was the top shelf portion. Um, 
so this is the same one by 10 pines that I use for the trim and everything else I just uh, so I made the the first one that goes all the way across is gonna be 10 foot and then I measured the inside from shelving to shelving I think it ended up being like I don't know 113 inches or something like that butted those two together glued them up uh, sanded everything down stained it twice with special walnut by Minwax and then two coats of polyurethane also by Minwax uh, for the top um, the whole bookshelf got stained special walnut um, and then so here this is I'm starting the um, I'm gonna call it the guts of the drawers so this is how I mount the drawers to the inside how I make the spine of it you know whatever you want to call it um, so I just use some just some birch you know I have plenty of it laying all the cutoffs from the CNC machine I have it laying around um, so you know I made the bottom two you know this whole thing needs to be about an inch and a half wide because the front of the face where the drawers go they're about an inch and a half wide you know so I, I wanted to make sure everything was even so like I said I made the bottom at the top and then I had took a drawer slide um, and I put those you know I lined up where I wanted to put the holes so so that I could later come back and make sure that all my holes were in the right spot so um, and also you know having a speed square having you know making sure everything's accurately measured um, is, is a huge plus so um, yeah, so, you know, and you're going to make one of these, more pocket holes, use the inch and a quarter torque screws to hold them together. Um, and then from there, I attach those pocket holes, might line them up perfectly. Like I said, it should be exactly the same width as that little front uh, piece on the face. Uh, inch and a half, drill all those pocket holes in, and then I'll come back, um, you know, take a measurement to get the back side, or you could use a square, you know, whichever one works. I think I just took a measurement. Um, yeah, and then so from there, um, once you get all those attached, you can start attaching. So before you attach the door slides, I just used a speed square again. Um, you know, took a little bit. I, I, so I have a scrap piece of block um, that uh, you can attach that I used to kind of level out all all of my drawers. But so first, to show you the trim. So the trim piece, same concept as, as the bottom no, here. Another quick walk around, kind of where I'm at now. I took three days in staining this thing because I just didn't have the time. But you can see that little small piece of pine that I'm sitting that drawer slide on. So I use that for all my videos. So you'll see that you'll see this thing multiple times. So I just use that. It really helps me. So I like, I'll, there's you can do drawers so many different ways. I just I glued glued and nailed these. Um, but so here I just use the same scrap plate scrap piece of wood uh, set my drawer slide on it and then so that when I, when I come back to actual do the boxes of the drawers um, that that's how high my drawer slide needs to be like I said there's a hundred different ways to how to do drawers that's just the way I do it I've changed that philosophy over the last few years um, so but yeah from here so I just cut the faces of the drawers um put the handle on and then use a little inch screw to hold those in and then you see all those pocket holes going up so that's what holds the top down um so that the top with the the shiny part doesn't move anywhere and then so from here i use my craig bit um that drills out the that bores out the hinge holes for the doors um later down the road i'll make another video of how i do the drawers or how i do the doors uh, style and rails and glue and doing the middle it's pretty simple um, but yeah so I use that boring jig uh, bore, that, bore out the the tube uh, where I'm gonna put the door hinge and then I have another jig set up um, that I use the um, that works so I can put the handles and then, so you saw me doing there I put the jig on there and then I use a three inch screw and I just poke a little hole so that 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 keeps my um, that keeps my drill bit straight uh, so that my handle's not crooked when I, you know, when I go to put it on. So, but if you enjoyed the video, thanks for